Emma of Normandy. Emma of Normandy was a queen consort of England, Denmark, and Norway. She was the daughter of Richard I, Duke of Normandy, and his second wife, Canora. Through her marriages to Athelred the Unready and Canute the Great, she became the queen consort of England, Denmark, and Norway. She was the mother of three sons, King Edward the Confessor, Alfred Atheling, and King Harthe Knut, as well as two daughters, Goethe of England, and Gunhild of Denmark. Even after her husband's death Emma remained in the public eye, and continued to participate actively in politics. She is the central figure within the Ancomia Meme Regini, a critical source for the history of early 11th century English politics. As Catherine Karkov notes, Emma is one of the most visually represented early medieval queens. In an attempt to pacify Normandy, King Athelred of England married Emma in 1002. Similarly Richard II, Duke of Normandy hoped to improve relations with the English in wake of recent conflict and a failed kidnapping attempt against him by Athelred. Viking raids on England were often based in Normandy in the late 10th century, and for Athelred this marriage was intended to unite against the Viking threat. Upon their marriage, Emma was given the Anglo-Saxon name of Elfgifu which was used for formal and official matters, and became Queen of England. She received properties of her own in Winchester, Rutland, Devonshire, Suffolk, and Oxfordshire, as well as the city of Exeter. Athelred and Emma had two sons, Edward the Confessor and Alfred Atheling, and a daughter, Goda of England. When King Sven Forkbeard of Denmark invaded and conquered England in 1013, Emma and her children were sent to Normandy, where Athelred joined soon after. They returned to England after Sven's death in 1014. Emma and Athelred's marriage ended with Athelred's death in London in 1016. Athelred's oldest son from his first marriage, Athelstan, had been heir apparent until his death in June 1014. Emma's sons had been ranked after all of the sons from his first wife, the oldest surviving of whom was Edmund Ironside. Emma made an attempt to get her oldest son, Edward, recognized as heir. Although this movement was supported by Athelred's chief advisor, Edric Striona, it was opposed by Edmund Ironside, Athelred's third oldest son, and his allies, who eventually revolted against his father. In 1015, Canute, the son of Sven Forkbeard, invaded England. He was held out of London until the deaths of Athelred and Edmund in April and November 1016, respectively. Queen Emma attempted to maintain Anglo-Saxon control of London until her marriage to Canute was arranged. Some scholars believe that the marriage saved her son's lives, as Canute tried to rid himself of rival claimants, but spared their lives. Canute gained control of most of England after he defeated Edmund Ironside on 18th of October at the Battle of Asandun, after which they agreed to divide the kingdom, Edmund taking Wessex and Canute the rest of the country. Edmund died shortly afterwards on 30th of November and Canute became the king of all England. At the time of their marriage, Emma's sons from her marriage to Athelred were sent to live in Normandy under the tutelage of her brother. At this time Emma became queen of England, and later of Denmark, and Norway. The Ancomium Emma Regini suggests in its second book that Emma and Canute's marriage, though begun as a political strategy, became an affectionate marriage. During their marriage, Emma and Canute had a son, Harthe Knut, and a daughter, Gunhilda. In 1036, Alfred Atheling and Edward the Confessor, Emma's sons with Athelred, returned to England from their exile in Normandy in order to visit their mother. During their time in England, they were supposed to be protected by Harthe Knut. However, Harthe Knut was involved with his kingdom in Denmark. Alfred was captured and blinded by holding a hot iron to his eyes. He later died from his wounds. Edward escaped the attack and returned to Normandy. He returned after his place on the throne had been secured. And Emmy Regini places the blame of Alfred's capture, torture, and murder completely on Harold Harefoot, thinking he intended to rid himself of two more potential claimants to the English throne by killing Edward and Alfred. Some scholars make the argument that it could have been Godwin, Earl of Wessex, who was traveling with Alfred and Edward as their protector in passage. Harthe Knut, Canute's son, succeeded the throne of Denmark after the death of his father in 1035. Five years later, he and his brother, Edward the Confessor, shared the throne of England, after the death of Harold, Harthe Knut's half-brother. Their reign was short, lasting only two years before Harthe Knut's own demise. Emma played a role in this coordinated reign by being a common tie between the two kings. The encomium of Queen Emma suggests that she herself may have had a significant role, even being an equal role in this co-leadership of the English kingdom. After her death in 1052 Emma was interred alongside Canute and Harthe Knut in the Old Minster, 
Winchester, before being transferred to the new cathedral built after the Norman conquest. During the English Civil War, their remains were disinterred and scattered about the cathedral floor by parliamentary forces. In 2012 the Daily Mail reported that Bristol University archaeologists will use the latest DNA techniques to identify and separate the jumbled bones. Emma's issue with Athelred the Unready were her issue with Canute the Great were. As Pauline Stafford noted, Emma is the first of the early medieval queens to be depicted through contemporary portraiture. To that end, Emma is the central figure within the Encomium Emmy Regini, a critical source for the study of English succession in the 11th century. During the reign of Athelred, Emma most likely served as little more than a figurehead, a physical embodiment of the treaty between the English and her Norman father. However, her influence increased considerably under Canute. Until 1043, writes Stafford, Emma was the richest woman in England, and held extensive lands in the East Midlands and Wessex. Emma's authority was not simply tied to land holdings, which fluctuated greatly from 1036 to 1043, she also wielded significant sway over the ecclesiastical offices of England. The encomium is divided into three parts, the first of which deals with Sven Forkbeard and his conquest of England. The second focuses on Canute and relates the defeat of Athelred, his marriage to Emma, and his kingship. The third addressed the events after Canute's death, Emma's involvement in the seizing of the royal treasury, and the treachery of Earl Godwin. It begins by addressing Emma, May our Lord Jesus Christ preserve you, O Queen, who excel all those of your sex in the amiability of your way of life. Emma is the most distinguished woman of her time for delightful beauty and wisdom. This flattery, writes Elizabeth M. Tyler, is part of a deliberate attempt to intervene, on Emma's behalf, in the politics of the Anglo-Danish court, a connotation which an 11th century audience would have understood. This proves to be a direct contrast to earlier evaluations of the text, such as the introduction to the 1998 reprint of Alistair Campbell's 1949 edition in which Simon Keynes remarks. While the modern reader who expects the encomium to provide a portrait of a great and distinguished queen at the height of her power will be disappointed, and might well despair of an author who could suppress, misrepresent, and garble what we know or think to have been the truth. Felice Lifshitz, in her seminal study of the encomium comments, to Alistair Campbell and to C.C.N. Elbrook the omission was explicable as a matter of artistic necessity and of Emma's personal vanity, both scholars subscribed to the older view which afforded the encomium only literary significance as a panegyric to individual or dynasty, but saw no political import. Prior to May 2008 only one copy of the encomium was believed to exist. However, a late 14th century manuscript, the Courtney Compendium, was discovered in the Devon Record Office, where it had languished since the 1960s. According to a report by the UK Arts Council, the most significant item within the text, for British history is the Encomium Emma Regini, it is highly probable that the present manuscript represents the most complete witness to the revised version of the Encomium. The manuscript was put up for auction in December 2008, and purchased for £600,000 on behalf of the Royal Library, Denmark. Unlike the Liber Vitae, the compendium does not contain any images of Emma. The new Minster Liber Vitae, currently housed in the British Library, was completed in 1030 shortly before Canute's death in 1035. The frontispiece depicts King Canute and Queen Emma presenting a cross to the altar of Newminster, Winchester. Stafford in her visual exegesis of the portrait states, It is not clear whether we should read it as a representation of a powerful woman or a powerless one. In one portrait, each facet of Emma's role as sovereign is displayed, that of a dutiful wife and influential queen. Emma is also depicted in a number of later medieval texts, such as the 13th century life of Edward the Confessor and a 14th century royal genealogy of the English kings, genealogical chronicle of the English kings. Emma and her sons Edward and Alfred are characters in the anonymous Elizabethan play Edmund Ironside, sometimes considered an early work by William Shakespeare. The ordeal of Queen Emma by fire at Winchester is a legend that seems to have originated in the 13th century. Queen Emma was accused of unchastity with Bishop Elfwine of Winchester. In order to prove her innocence, she was obliged to undergo the ordeal of walking over nine red-hot plowshares placed on the pavement of the nave of Winchester Cathedral. Two bishops conducted the barefoot queen to the line of red-hot plowshares. She walked over the red-hot plowshares, but felt neither the naked iron nor the fire. William Blake did an illustration of the event. See also Encomium MA. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.